And it's glad uh, day for us here in the studio. We're glad to be back. Ragged Edge Radio, this is Russ Dizdar live. That's right, live after about uh, 10 days. We've been out a little bit on the field and then a little bit of vacation time after the conferences and all the rest. But uh, we're glad, glad to be back. And uh, this has been a tremendous day to begin with. And we had some big rains and showers. And we noticed that some of the electric was off around here. So uh, we're just going to pray that God will give us the hour that we can take with you today. The Ragged Edge Radio broadcast on a Tuesday night. It is the 8th of uh, July already. Amazing to me. It really is. So glad to be with you. So glad to tell you that nobody loves you more. Nobody knows you better. Nobody desires you the way God does in Christ. And that's the good news we have. Welcome around the world. Global Star Satellite. Hotbird Satellite. The archives downloaded in well over 140 nations of the world. This is a day in which, uh, once again, the Middle East shows the battleground. Quote, Israel launches Operation Protective Edge. Here's what the article says. Tuesday morning, Israel launched what they're calling Operation Protective Edge. Government officials say the aim is to secure the end of two weeks of Hamas rocket fire. The Guardian reports that in a combined effort Both uh, aerial and naval forces, Israel's defense forces, targeted overnight approximately 50 terror sites and targets across the Gaza Strip. So there's no question about it. I saw some of the film today. Um, Explosions on both sides. Everything obviously heated up. Goes on to say this, quote, The IDF targeted dozens of uh, terror sites across the Gaza Strip, including concealed rocket launchers, launching infrastructures, uh, a weapon storage facility, training bases, terror tunnels, shafts, and future targets. Keep your eyes in the Middle East. That's where uh, some of the most uh, vicious and violent of the warfare. Behind all of it still is a spiritual battle in the world that we live in. There's no question about it. The world is going to be pushed to that edge, to the edge of um, desiring somebody to come in and save it. And and, and the world's going to sell out to um, that, that issue is going to be whoever will save the world, even if it's the devil himself. All around the world today, we want to say hello. This is Russ Dizdar, the Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast, going live tonight again. We're going to try not to be away at all, but there's going to be some times that we will be because of conferences and the rest. So glad again to meet so many of you in Montana, Cincinnati, Newark, uh, many other places around the nation this last year. And on to Colorado in just about uh, 20 days, we're going to be in Colorado Pikes Peak at the Prophecy in the news conference, the Prophecy Summit there. And uh, we're going to be uh, glad to see some of you. And we have some meetings coming up there that are going to be, uh, I just believe, providential. But I'm looking again. We've got a request from the Facebook and then also from my direct uh, email. Dear Sister in Christ in Scotland, and we have other listeners in Scotland and pastors and others in Scotland, so blessings to you. Here's what it says on the website that was sent to me. It says, Go Bonkers at the Wicker Man Festival 2014. If you know anything about Wicker Man. And the occult behind it, the ritual behind it, the sacrificial, the human sacrificial ritual behind it. It's amazing to me that anybody can play games with um, with ancient human sacrifice. But that's exactly what the Wicker Man, well, its background is all about. Now, this is what part of it is. I'm looking at a picture of the Wicker Man, one with a bow and arrow, one with horns, in the kind of the kind of sense that it's almost like Pan, uh, maybe not so much like Pan, but human and animal combination. And again, they're they're going to sell the Wicker Man Festival 2014 in Scotland uh, as um, a family festival, uh, a year of homecoming, and they got so many. Well, I'm looking at pictures here. So many things that look nice about it. And so many things that look nice about it. You know, a summer, a midsummer uh, festival and party and so forth. Now, I'm looking for the date really quick here. I know it's uh, coming up July the 25th, 26th of uh, this month. 
And so there's pastors that are now um, going to set out to pray concerning the dark side of all of this. And uh, the backdrop to Wickerman, once again, that's what we need to look at. What's the occult, the human sacrificial? What's the backdrop to all of this? No questions, pagans and Wiccans and New Agers and many others will do this. But I want you to know tonight that uh, when there's convergences and, and summertime festivals that involve what looks like to the public uh, like a piece of history, uh, like a family festival, like a like just a cultural thing. The issue is, what's what's the origin? What's really behind it? Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. Dealing with undergrounders for 30 years, the underground ancient brotherhood. Now, we're talking about the real Luciferian, the ones that are really in the know, the ones that are really engaging the powers of darkness, and they know they're here to bring in the Antichrist and all the rest. Now, they look at uh, New Agers and Wiccans and Pagans and festivals like this as light level. I mean, they know that it's part of the underground. They know that it's part of dark spirits and masqueraded and the rest. They know the meaning of it. Matter of fact, they may go to recruit. They may go to do darker rituals in the context of this. So let's pray for our friends and pastors and others there in Scotland concerning the Wickerman festival that's happening this month there. Now, there's going to be other festivals all over uh, the place this summer during during ritual dates, like in uh, July, Demon Revels, in August, uh, Satanic Revels, and the rest, St. James. So keep your eyes on those, because it's still the secret power of lawlessness, the mysterium, the mystery of iniquity, Second Thessalonians 2. That's what's behind the world that is um, that is being pushed to the brink, on the one hand, but the underworld that is spiritually, in the dark sense, evolving and uh, trying to reach its goal. Revelation 13 will give you a picture of that. Let me just tell you quickly what's going on here. The website behind the radio broadcast, it is shatterthedarkness.net. Now, we've come back from the Nephilim Mounds Conference, and the Nephilim Mounds uh, DVDs are already up. The Prophecy in the News have already had them up. And so we got a link there if you're interested in those. Or the Whitestone Remnant Conference, we put a link there also because they made DVDs, and that was a historic meeting out there in Montana. So we do have links to those. Don't forget... Millions of you have done this around the world, downloaded the free training courses. And it might be good in the context of rituals this summer, because I'm going to tell you right now, let me tell you again, because tonight we're kind of, well, we have so much to tell you. So tonight, though, is is to be giving you kind of a wrap-up from uh, a week and a half ago. Tonight is the Luciferian quest for super DNA about Nephilim, and the big question, can they be saved? Now, I'm, I'm going to answer that, but probably starting about 20 minutes in tonight. So give, give me about 10 minutes to give you updates and some other things, the free uh, training courses that are still online there, 700 hours and more, and more is being added, and the new live training that's coming up, that's scheduled for the 20, I think the 24th of this month uh, to begin again, and the workbook should be out prior to that. So we're trying to get everything, all the goals. Of course, we set the goals, but sometimes there's interruptions. Sometimes there's crucial things. The radio is one thing, but out on the field and um, working with individuals. So we're going to be in this next weekend, uh, possibly in two states, the weekend afterwards, another another state up north to the left altogether. And it's just, um, we have calls and requests from folks everywhere, and we're trying to get to so many of you. So keep us in your prayers. Keep us uh, covered. And I want to say thank you to my pastor friend in Ireland and others all around that not only put up the prayers, but once in a while just let us know that's what they're doing. And they're listening to the Lord. And some of the things that I've seen come in are so right on that God is showing you in the midst of uh, you praying for some of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, some of the, um, the SIIU, the REAP trips that we do, we can't tell you about in advance, but we can tell you about the results later. I'm still just um, 
filled with joy concerning the man that at the very end of the conference, there were others, but there was this man that came. I don't want to say his name out loud here because I don't have his permission, but I believe he got powerfully saved and we're just still praying for him and just uh, thinking about him. I was hoping that he would email. We have many things we want to help him out with and give him. So um, at the Nephilim Mounts Conference, the last day, the last hour at the very, I mean, when it was all over, to my dear friend that came up and wanted to get saved and, and pray to receive Christ. We're still thinking about you. Let us know how you're doing. And as a matter of fact, all around the world, there's many of you that have come to Christ. And I get these stories left and right and so many. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and read one thing that just um, uh, from a friend that posted on, our, on, our, on, on the social website. Uh, it just says this, Russ, your Shadow the Darkness net uh, .net site has been a lifesaver and a soul saver for me. For the sake of humanity, I pray that millions more people will globally discover uh, your broadcasts. And I pray that any attacks, assignments, curses, spells against you are broken, destroyed, crushed, and rendered powerless in the name of Jesus. Well, I want to say thank you to my brother in Christ. He put out the eight points on the Philip factor when it comes to evangelism, which is what uh, becoming, you know, the, the call for 10 million fierce, that is fearless, empowered believers based on the Philip factor, Acts chapter 8. Let me give those to you real quick. Number one, Philip knew that he was saved. He had peace with God. Number two, Philip was clearly filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Number three, Philip was obedient to the Great Commission going out, obviously, to uh, win souls. Number four, Philip was filled with the word of God. Number five, Philip was a great witness of Jesus, sharing the gospel everywhere he could. Number six, Philip was focused, immovable, unstoppable. Number seven, Philip was alone, but he wasn't alone. Jesus was with him. The hand of God, the power of God was everywhere. Read Acts 8, number eight, point number eight. And thank you, my friend, for putting this up on the social site. Number eight, just as uh, evidenced with Philip, when you witness to anyone and everybody, you will be supernaturally helped. Well, Jesus said he'd be with us to the very end of the age. The Spirit of God will guide and lead, and uh, that's the truth. The book of Acts bears that out. Let me say to every believer listening to me in Christ around the world, wherever you are, may God's grace and mercy, and uh, let me say the word restoration. Some of you need restored. You need the strength of the Lord. You need to wait on the Lord that he might renew your strength and uh, let you um, stand up again. So stand up again and fight. You have, you have been designed in Christ Jesus uh, to have that victory that he gives us over the world, over the flesh, over the devil, and the empowerment to bear the fruit that we need to, and increasingly so in this day and age. And so all of us can realize God has not stepped back in the end of days. God powerfully steps into the midst in the end of days. God will be powerful all over the place. Come hell, high water, the Antichrist, whoever else. God has not forsaken his people. And you can stand and count on every promise and every truth and every instruction and his inseparable presence. Well, I've got something to tell you in the last 10 minutes of this broadcast that I think is good news for all believers in the day in which we live. Now, I mentioned er earlier about Israel What's going on there? I mentioned also about Scotland, and that's going to happen all over the world. Let me tell you why we have said for the last five years the ramping up of the dark side. Uh, because a couple of things. I mean, on the boots on the ground, we see it. Uh, we're concerned because the body of Christ at large, at large, seems to be missing it. And then there's the fact that biblical prophecy proclaims, God gives us the intel, God gives us the warning, that even more, in an unprecedented way, of the dark side will manifest and show itself. So, with all that has happened in the last 30, 40, 50 years, because more gateways been opened, more people are doing astral projection, more people are doing rituals, more people are doing channeling, more people are opening gateways and portals and so forth. So instead of 500, I'm just giving you an example. Now you've got 5 million or 50 million or a billion people around the world that are 
clearly opening doors in some level to the dark side because they're pressing in. Their, their goal, as the Spirit of God has said, 1 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verse 1 on down. I mean, there's no question about the surge of the dark side in the end of days. And there's no question that uh, not only what we see right now, you got to realize more than ever is coming. So when we tell you about the dark side, more of it is coming as prophesied, more because more doorways have been opened over the last 30, 40 years. And now I'm going to say this, that in the next, in this year, in the next couple of years, uh, I think because of the last 30, 40, 50, if you begin to look at all the laying of ground, All the foundations, all the Nephilim architecture, the ancient gateways, the old places being opened. If you look at the fact that the underground mysterium, that uh, mystery of iniquity, that that operating collective on a global scale uh, is uh, more uh, organized and more intact and, and globally operating, as was said of it 2,000 years ago in 2 Thessalonians 2. So this um, mystery of iniquity, this secret, this hidden mysterium, that's the collective operate, you know, of course, led by Satan himself worldwide, politically, economically, environmentally, uh, in, the, in, in, in every sense you can think of, they've got to, as has been revealed in prophetic literature. So the goal of the Luciferic, that is dark spirit inspired globalism. Charged political ideology, charged military vision, charged uh, environmental propaganda, charged uh, economic siphoning. When I say the word charged, I mean uh, direct demonic satanic presence power operating. So we've got to see the developments on a global scale. Now, I'm going to say that again and say, say, please listen to the last 10 minutes today as we bring some things out of Romans 8 so that all believers go marching into these days. We're already in the last days, but marching into the last of the last and the darkest of the darkest days, uh, carrying high the banner. Stand up, stand up for Jesus Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. You sing the song, my friend, and you sing it in the presence and power of the Spirit of God. Now, there's days that we go through so many things. I'll talk about that in the last 10 minutes. But I'm looking at so many of the headlines, looking at so many things we need to talk about that I haven't talked about in the last 10 days. But I want you to know that the agenda, when we talk about Nephilim, and, and while I was off, I was looking at a lot of videos on the Nephilim issue, the hybrid issue. And we're looking at some of the videos where millions, I mean, that's why I said at the conference, that's why I really pushed for the conference to be done. That's why we've done a number of uh, uh, live broadcasts and teaching on the subject, because the world is talking about it by the tens of millions and the new agers and the occultists and the um well there are those that are going back science and technology are teaming up with the ancient ascended masters that is um the fallen ones in the sky ephesians 6 uh it's all about the the idea of uh, becoming the godmen and hybridism and it's all about uh, altering humanity So when I looked through quite a bit of the things today that I wanted to bring out today, I looked at, um, and and I've seen quickly Paul McGuire at the conferences. Good man, good brother, uh, appreciated his passion for Christ. But he has an article called The Artificial Paradise and the New Man. Mankind at the Final Turning Point. And he just put this out June um, 23rd, last month, at the News uh, with views.com. Now, I'm going to read something that he quoted out of a book concerning Hitler. And I think this is important because when we talk about the Nephilim issue, uh, the DNA issue, the, the Luciferians, I believe this, real Luciferians have a massive quest for the charging, the altering, the changing, the, um, the uh, uh, well, if, I, I want to say uh, the re- uh, appearance of Nephilim DNA. 
Because if you know anything about the Benai Elohim, the sun, I mean, the fallen ones that have come and engaged, they produced Nephilim. Again, Genesis 6, we know this. Many of you do. Millions of you do. Now, because it's such a broad subject now, and there's propaganda, misinformation when it comes to the New Age, when it comes to Van Daniken, when it comes to the alienologist and all of this, when it comes to the Gnostics, when it comes to the quest, that's why it's vital to come down to say, hey, listen, this is one of the most evil, wretched, and violent, and human-destroying agendas that is the creation and uh, the existence of the nephilim on the earth wherever they went and that's why there was a massive massive judgment to end them before they would end the human race and everybody talks about well, they're, whether they're going to reappear. And the, the answer to that is there's no question, without question, the quest. Jack Parsons, Babylon Working, Mojave Desert, uh, uh, Aleister Crowley, and the Moon Child, the quest among Hindu um, gurus, all around the world, the co- Russian cosmists and the rest. There is, without question, and then there is, without question, among the undergrounders. Now, I wanted to find this because I already said that more of the dark side will be manifesting than ever. Um, it will be more powerful than ever. And it will be, it will be, um, let me see here. I think that we have been, uh, I'm not yeah. sure. We're here. Are we all right? Yeah, we're losing. we keep losing you. So I'm not sure if your internet's having problems or not. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to see see if we're still on here tonight. We're going to hope that we are. Um, we did have some kind of weather come through that, again, shut off um, the, the Internet stuff earlier today. So uh, maybe that's coming down on us right now. I'm looking out. It's dark outside. Uh, so we might have more rain here in Ohio. But, but we're glad to be on. It looks like we're on again. And uh, the recording's on. So let's go back to uh, touching on three things. One, the overwhelming development of the dark side. And we're going to say this, more dark side presence is going to continue to develop. More possessions, more engagement, more events, more doctrines of demons, more demonized false apostles, teachers, all that. On the other side of this, I think there's going to be more powerful demonstrations. Because when we move all the way to the false prophet in Revelation 13, when he does ascend from the under the earth, uh, we're going to see the most demonstrative counterfeit spiritual supernatural powers than ever in history the world's going to be so absolutely sucked in by all of it so we we need to realize that more and more and more more powerful more in number more in um, in every kind of way uh, saturating the world and the earth and humanity as the dark side moves its agenda closer to the chaos and the antichrist now with that comes this issue uh, the return of the nephilim We already mentioned in the series uh, two weeks ago, and we've said this publicly, the Nazis and Himmler, Hitler's goal of a master race. Now, when I say that, I want to read you something. I'm going to ask you where you think it comes from. Where does it come from? What I'm about to read to you, I want you to think about this, okay? And this is a quote. I believe that it comes from somebody that has been spiritually guided. Someone that really understood the dark side's agenda. Someone that was really here to promote that agenda. So I want you to hear what this individual, and you try to guess who this is, and I'll tell you who it is, but here's the words, quote, What will the social order of the future be like? Comrade, I will tell you. There will be a class of overlords. After them, the rank and file of the party members in a hierarchical order. And then the great masses of anonymous anonymous followers, servants, and workers in perpetuity. And beneath them, again, all of the conquered foreign races, the modern slaves. And over and above all these will reign a new an exalted nobility of whom I cannot speak. Stop. Uh, This is breathtaking in a lot of ways. 
to me, this is somebody who's gone to hell's kitchen, was instructed um, by the fallen one himself, and was um, was uh, just uh, packed with hell's agenda, with what's to come. And so you have this um, historical figure. I want you to hear this clearly, because I believe what this person speaks echoes hell's direct agenda. Here's what he says, quote, in reference to all the slaves and all the rest and, and so forth, the ruling class, he says this, quote, and over and above all these, all the rest of humanity, will reign a new and exalted nobility of whom I cannot speak. But all of these plans, the militant members will know nothing. I'm going to read the rest of this, and I want you to hear this clearly. Somebody speaking about the conquered world. Somebody speaking about a new order that's going to be here with a new class of overlords, the rank-and-file party members, and the servants and the followers, the workers, and then the conquered foreign races, the modern slaves. But over that, here's what they're saying. In this message is... And above all of that, above all of what the world sees, above all of what the world knows when it comes to the new world order, above all of that will be a new, I'm quoting, will reign a new and exalted nobility of whom I cannot speak. End of quote. He's talking about a leadership that, a small leadership, that will guide the world. And a, 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 they will reign, it's new, they're going to be exalted, an exalted nobility. And this historical figure, at that moment in history, could not speak or reveal anything more. But it goes on with this quote, But all of these plans, the militant members will know nothing. Listen again as I quote this individual. The new man is living amongst us now. He is here. Isn't that enough for you? I will tell you a secret. I have seen the new man. He is intrepid and cruel. I was afraid of him. End of quote. Now I've read this a number of times throughout the years. It comes out of history books. It comes out of those who've written about Adolf Hitler. It is supposed to be the exact words of Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler says that in the conquered New World Order, among all the rule and reign, over and above all of that will reign a new and exalted nobility. See, it reminds me of Revelation 13. It reminds me of the book of Daniel. It really does remind me of this, uh, the kingdom with its ten kings, and it, it reminds me of a a uh, class of uh, the few of the world leaders that will rule and reign in a global sense. It's as if this individual Hitler was taken down, or hell was brought, or his hell's presence, Satan himself, guided these words. They're satanically prophetic. Hitler says, quote, and over and above all these will reign a new and exalted nobility of whom I cannot speak. Now that's, we're talking now 60 years ago. And that um, black nobility, that satanic nobility, that Luciferian nobility, yeah, I, I think that it's already in place. I think that the, the global, uh, shadow, political, economic, militaristic, Luciferic system is already in place, held back by the restrainer, Second Thessalonians 2, and but yet bursting at the seams to get out. Bursting at um, in, in their agenda. They're ready for their agenda. They want to go. And, and the undergrounders tell me this. Now again, we have to look at the Word of God as the final authority, even when it comes to whatever it is, undergrounders and whatever we actually see with our own eyes. The Word of God becomes the final measure, the grid by which we take a look at everything. 
But I'm going to say Revelation 13, like Peter did in Acts chapter... Two, when the Spirit of God came and the fulfillment of prophecy of Joel occurred, he declared, this is that which, which was prophesied. And so I'm going to say that the shadow government worldwide, this Luciferic system that most likely is already in place, this, this um, what, what demonically inspired Hitler said, this, this new um, exalted nobility is probably already out there. And the declaration of that small, but the most powerful of Luciferic leaders, is that those underneath them are not going to know. They're not going to know the real agenda. I would say worldwide, there's a lot of Luciferians that don't even know they are. Music industry, television industry, military, scientists. Any scientist or technician or inventor that allows supernatural presence, ascended masters to guide them in the development of technologies that will evolve humanity, what they believe would be immortality. You've been embraced by and you're being guided by fallen ones. They got a quest. They got an agenda. I mean, the the history of World War II and part of um, the agenda of that uh, horrific time was the development of a global order, a new world order, and a master race of hybrid humans. That's history. The master race is a race based on uh, spiritual revelation about the ancient Nephilim, the Aryan, the God-men. And their spiritually guided quest to backbreed to them and bring a reappearance. That's why we must talk about this agenda. Because in the end of days, everything that Satan has, everything that Satan can use, is going to come out on the table of human history. The troops of the dark side have been uh, filtering into this side increasingly. And so Hitler speaks so many years ago, and uh, here's again the words about the new man, about the hybrid man, about the Nephilim man, about the master race, about the God man, small g, that is in biblical history, biblical revelation, uh, transmuted radical evil, anti-God, and then anti-humanity. Humanity just becomes the servant. Humanity becomes the human sacrifice. Check out and do the studies of all the Nephilim architecture around the world where the Nephilim were. It all involved massive human sacrifice to maintain the powers and to gain the embedding of their civilization. So Hitler says, I believe inspired directly by the spirit of Antichrist. Quote, the new man, that is the hybrid man, is living amongst us now. He is here. Isn't that enough for you? I will tell you a secret. I have seen the new man. That's Hitler. That's Hitler. I have seen the new man. Some attribute to this being that he has gotten some kind of vision of the coming Antichrist, the, the man. The one to rule, the one to follow, the one that Albert Speer and others had written about that uh, those present in the room when Hitler got up shaking, standing the corner, quivering and shaking because he saw the presence of the new man, the coming man. Here's what it says. Hitler says by, I believe, demonic uh, inspiration, by the demonic opening up his vision, he's seen the new man. And he refers to him being... Here's what he says, quote, he is intrepid and cruel. And I was afraid of him. That's Hitler. Hitler is afraid of him. Now, if you read anything about the little horn in the book of Revelation or the book of Daniel, and you read about the beast in the book of Revelation, you're going to see the same kind of understanding. This stern-faced king, this uh, this cruel, this, this one that's going to mock God and bring a verbal war against God and against those who dwell in heaven. Hitler says of that which he thinks he saw, that he was afraid of him, that he feared the new man. Well, in the demonic sense, you should fear the new man, the satanic man, the hybrid 
man. Now, let me tell you again about the underground when it comes to the breeding process. Now, all the way back into the 80s, we've dealt with people who said they, they were breeders. There's no question about being breeders for um, four generations now. And that's what's not been brought out. And we need to continue to scream that one of the most secret projects ever in history, I believe the modern-day satanic ritual abuse, DID, MPD, a uh, phenomenon is nothing more than the extension of the goal of the master race and the secret project of Lebensborn among the Nazis. Because this goes beyond the Nazis. This goes this goes to Hell's Kitchen and its blueprints and what it needs for the future. There is no political global kingdom without the troops that can help bring it about bring down all the other nations, and then enforce. So there's no question that that coming kingdom needs uh, the most um, radical, cruel uh, warriors. It needs what Hitler spoke about, uh, the godmen and um, the new man. The undergrounders all believe this. I mean, the really the the chosen ones, the undergrounders, those in SRA, those who have been uh, you know bred in that um, bloodline going back, first generation, fifty five to sixty five. Now those above you, they were all involved. There may be um, SRAs above you also, but primarily those uh, in the eighties, those were the the, the 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 ones that were guiding this and, and implementing this project. And so you have millions between the ages of 55, 65, basically. And then their children between 35, 45. Then their children between 21 and 27. I'm just giving approximates. And then from 0 to 17, you have four generations of those who are bloodlined um, in the development of becoming the master race, becoming super humans, becoming the new man. So unless that real quest, unless that real uh, revelation is ripped off the kind of um, dumbed down, media oriented, uh, maybe again, even in, you you know, the American Psychological Association and those who have tagged satanic ritual abuse and MPD and DID and all the rest uh, doesn't even scratch the surface of what it's really all about and why... There are so many millions, multi-continental, multinational. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing that out to say that there's no question that, that breeders within the structure of the ancient brotherhood, breeders in the structure of uh, this quest to create godmen, they're all going to tell you the same thing. Whether you're in Ireland, whether you're in New Zealand, whether you're in Australia, whether you're in Pretoria, whether you are in Canada, whether you are in, throughout the United States or in Berlin or in Russia now. The big secret is Russian SRAs, uh, and uh, they've really been silenced. I'm glad that some of them are coming out and talking more. But the truth is, millions of them will tell you about the breeding. Not only the breeding for the sake of the coven, but the breeding for the sake of um, a bloodline that where the DNA has been altered and changed with the goal of recreating Godmen. Now, whether you want to believe that that's possible or not, that's another thing. But the quest for it is real, just as real as Jack Parsons, American rocket scientist in the Mojave Desert doing the Babylon working. The quest to create a altered Godman, small g, which really means nothing more than fallen ones um, DNA. I mean, a, a DNA mix again. Uh, the 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 whole goal. If you say, well, they wanted to create the Aryans. The Aryans in the history of what they are and were would be considered Nephilim, a a a race of Nephilim, uh, of God men, of giants. And it wasn't the good thing. They weren't the pure good. And, you know, there's no question the idea that Nephilim would have powers of telekinesis and telepathy and and, and many other um, powers inbuilt. I mean, built into the DNA, not just by possession of demons, but built into the DNA. And all the undergrounders know this also. 
when it comes to their blood, purifying their blood and charging their blood. And, and that's why they do the rituals. And that's why they want to receive more demons, because more demons bring more charging and empowerment to supernatural abilities with a goal to alter humanity in a bloodline generation by generation uh, backbreeding so they can create, I mean, even the rituals we talked about two weeks ago to, um, to uh, cause at the moment of conception demonic charging or uh, uh, the, the introduction of demonic presence. So the backbreeding project's real. The breeders will tell you that they've not only been used, and there's been many women in the SRA structure, the ancient brotherhood, this order, the order, uh, they've been used to create uh, more and more children for the coven, more and more. And a lot of it, you know, many of you that deal with it and have dealt with this around the world, whether you're in Australia or Canada or wherever, you know that they've been doing this um, because the project is all about getting further, closer and closer and closer to direct Nephilim development. Now, whether somebody wants to believe that or not, that's clear to the attempt. Whether you want to believe what Hitler and Himmler was doing or not, um, or that it could have been done, uh, that's up to your skepticism. But the fact that they were guided, the fact that they were doing it, is very clear. And so we must announce clearly, and I, I would encourage all SRA, DID, MPD, those helpers and workers, and those who've been working 10, 20, 30 years now on the field collectively tell the story because i do believe that this sra agenda this chosen one agenda this back breeding to create a whole new race is one of the most physically and supernaturally hidden parts of the agenda outside of the development of the antichrist and the false prophet himself and i do believe that um you're going to hear and you have heard of Nephilim breeders. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you that we probably haven't done before. Back in the 80s, when we heard about those chosen ones coming in saying that they were in a ritual setting, had a fallen angelic presence appear and uh, sexually engage them with the goal of trying to recreate the Nephilim. We have those who claim to be Nephilim mothers. Now, there's a difference between backbreeding in the sense of creating Nephilim from backbreeding and the mothers of the women that were used for that than in those who are direct. Let's remember again biblical history and then the outside of the biblical history, like you knock on the rest. Uh, we need to go back and take a look. First generation Nephilim, what were they like? Now, there's no question about second generation and all altered, uh, you know, down the road that there was a weakness and a, and that's exactly what, uh, um, that's exactly what the Himmler Hitler uh, issue was all about. That that uh, that the real God men were dumbed down because they began to mix with humanity and began to water down their godlike status. So here's the question. We've dealt with individuals over the years, all the way back to the 80s, who said that they were breeders of Nephilim. Let me, let me say it this way. We, have though, we know of those who are teams, prayerfully, carefully, because they wanted to verify, had gone after this. To this very day, there's a team that continues to go after the verification factor. Let me tell you, when it comes to shatter the darkness and what we do, uh, when we are engaging the underground. Now, where there where there's real Luciferian, real stuff going on, we don't want to just, listen, we don't need any, um, we don't need a bunch of uh, internet mumbo jumbo of the photo cropping and, uh, uh, and, and just, we don't need a, a, a hundred innuendos to try to bring about a fact. Here's how we do it. Okay, this is, I'm just going to tell you how we do this. Based on Ezekiel chapter 8, where even Ezekiel did not know what was going on, but the Spirit of God, God guided him, God opened it up to him, God brought him in. What was really there was findable. Um, 
what's that's and that's what I'm saying in all of our in all of our SIU stuff and all of our research and all of our going and hunting and looking and researching and and uh, we do it the way God demonstrated it done in in Ezekiel chapter eight when God Himself opened doors. Here's why. Here's why I'm saying that investigators and others and those who do not do this by the hand of God are not going to be able to cut into this. Because of the mysterium, the secret power of lawlessness, because the, the powers of darkness are real and they're, it's all about their hiddenness and that's part of their, their you know, mode of operation. So 2 Thessalonians 2, the mysterium worldwide. If you, leave, if you read Revelation 13, you see that a global political, economic, militaristic system rises as if out of nowhere. But the fact is, it will pre-exist and be there uh, when the time comes. Physically and even more so, supernaturally hidden. When it comes to satanic ancient brotherhood type ritual places and so forth, um, physically, but more than that, supernaturally hidden. When it comes to the structure inside of SRAs and chosen ones, uh, physically, but also uh, and by threat and so forth, and, and you know threat of life, but also and punishment, but also supernaturally hidden. So the question is: Are there Nephilim mothers today? I believe there's no question that the quest spiritually has been to bring them about, preparing them in a bloodline demonizing with the goal of altering them. So that in ritual, or if there is direct fallen angel to human female, uh, direct, um, there's nothing in the word of God that says that will never occur again. But verification is important. So, we've heard stories of um, Nephilim mothers and they created babies. And okay, we've heard this all the way back to the 80s. We have a number, we have individuals among our caseload right now that would claim that. The issue of verifying that or finding the Nephilim, that's another story. Now, we do have reports from across the board that people said they've engaged Nephilim, they've uh, led Nephilim to Christ. I think that's absolutely untrue. Uh, if you have first-generation Nephilim, I mean, look again at the history of Nephilim in the Old Testament. None of them sought God. None of them wanted God. Uh, they were completely in opposition. Uh, they were completely altered. They weren't even considered real humans. If you read the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14, Inasmuch then as the children have taken partaken of flesh and blood, referring now to Christ, he himself, that is Christ, likewise shared in the same that through his death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all of their lifetime subject to bondage. Now that's a tremendous revelation. That what Jesus did coming to conquer sin and to break the barrier came to, um, uh, to just literally destroy Satan's work when it comes to death. But Jesus, God became human flesh. John's Gospel, chapter 1, the Logos became human flesh. Jesus died only for human flesh, for real humans. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, the physics of God, the work of God in that, and the blood shed by Christ, and the resurrection itself, only can be applied to humans and no one else. No one else. Now, we're just listening again. Notice this is really strange. Um, we've been knocked off the live live air again, but we're still here recording, so we'll put it up, and you're listening probably, many of you, to the recorded broadcast. But this broadcast has been interrupted now, and I'm looking outside. There is no thunder. There is no lightning. There is no rain. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we rebuke Satan and his work and all of uh, those who would try to uh, stop what they consider is to be ancient, secret information. Here comes um, the 
live radio back. We're glad to be back on the live again with you. Thank you very much, Global Star, and we appreciate that. And uh, we're glad to be with you worldwide. But let me tell you that the recording of this is still intact and we'll have it all up. But I'll tell you again that Nephilim cannot be real biblically pictured uh, first generation nephilim never were saved cannot be saved no one died for them no one had the dna of the nephilim uh this this is this is just outside of the biblical picture nor did any nephilim go around crying out god save me now you may have people that say they think they are or they've been spiritually deceived or they were breeders or that they had a demonized priest that um, had a ritual sex and demonic transference occurred at the uh, at the marriage to the beast uh, ceremony ritual and there can be uh, demonization in the in the in the sexual act demon transmission in the sexual act uh, the charging demonically of the womb the charging demonically of the fetus there can be all of that. But it doesn't necessarily mean direct first generation Nephilim. What it really means is uh, demonized, uh, charged individuals, which is um, part of what the goal has been. Now, I noticed again for the, I think, fourth time today, live, we've gone uh, off, uh, uh, we've been cut off. So um, you pray for us, you pray for this broadcast and the recording of it that will be able to get out there, because I'm, I'm very sure that the dark side does not want this one out there. There's no, no question about that. There's opposition. So we thank the Lord. Here comes Global Star. Thank you very much uh, for putting us back on. we got nine minutes left, and we're going to do this tonight and tell you that... Um, the project, and I, I want to say this with all, this is 30 years of research. I, I believe that whether you're looking at the alienology, whether you're looking at the uh, uh, ufology, whether you're looking at uh, uh, old occultism, the mystery religions, um, all of it put together, astral projection, all the rest, there's a overall quest for altered godlike humans. You can look at it in the, in, in the many, many different um, YouTube videos now put out by so many different ones. And there's, as we've already said, the science of, of transhumanism is inseparably linked to the ancient, well, they would call them the God, the, uh, the, the gods, referring to the ascended masters, which are really nothing more than Ephesians chapter 6, Cosmocrator, Archai, the exousia and the Poneus Penumenicae, these spiritual beings in the heavenly realms. And their goal to, um, you know, not only bring false, you know, d- doctrines of demons and demonic empowerment and non-human enhancement and all the rest and the deception and the, and the uh, transfiguring to look like angels and so forth. All the deceptions coming. It's all been prophesied by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth. Can we expect the Luciferians, and do we, and here's what I'm saying, looking at, look at the the quest of the Luciferian, in my opinion, the real Luciferian, would be to see an altered DNA to such a degree, they know that it can't be savable, they know that it's controllable by Satan. I mean, Satan can control, wouldn't you think he can control Nephilim? There's no way out. See, I don't believe there's any way out for the real Nephilim. I think there's way out for those who are abused and demonized and split and programmed and whatever else. We've seen Jesus deliver and save and heal and bring people out. They fear that. They hate that. That's why they oppose all of this. But if you want to know the um, agenda, the agenda is to bring an alteration. The agenda is to bring about beasts, Theron, which I believe would be rendered look like human seem like human uh look like you know bodies of human but but be altered in every single way and that's the book of revelation listen we're running down to where we have six minutes left we apologize for the um the the interruptions but may the lord deal with um the dark side when it comes to that title real quick new dna evidence could explain what happened to the neanderthals another one says this Quote, listen to this uh, when it comes to DNA. Amazing scient- amazing scientists, our DNA is mutating as we speak. We are developing 12 strands. Let me read another one. How to strengthen your DNA and create super babies. Let me read another, another one here. Uh, we, well, we just lost that one. Uh, that's okay. So when we take a look at the dark side's development, 
the unprecedented numbers, more power, more manifesting work, and the alteration as um, they're driving towards the day of chaos and the day of the Antichrist, the apocalypse of the um, Anthroposanamos, the man of lawlessness. So as they're driving towards that, the world's going to become just absolutely uh, gripped by... And they'll call it things like the evolution of humanity, the evolutionary spike, the ascension of humanity, uh, DNA ascension. They're going to call it so many different things, transhumanism. But the real Luciferian, they know the the agenda. They know what they've been attempting for, uh, well, since the thirty, since the late thirties. Have they arrived? It's very possible. Have they created Nephilim? That's a possibility. Where are they? How do you find them? How do you deal with them? Well, those are some things we need to re- remember. Again, uh, we need to deal with verification. We need to go back for the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom. We need to go back and realize that in the midst of the days in which we live, that the darkest of the dark will be coming out in every single way. Can I read you the words of God? Verse 35, Romans chapter 8, Who shall separate us from the love of God, of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, verse 37, have you read this? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38, listen to the Spirit of God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can I ask you right now, those that are listening, those who might have done rituals and whether you, some of you that have tried to stop the broadcast tonight, You don't want the information out. No question. We already know this in Deliverance Encounters. The dark side does not want this information out. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God dwells in you. If God is for you, who can stand against? The Spirit of God speaks very plainly and clearly in Romans chapter 8. Yet in all these things, persecutions and trials and all the things going on, the end of days and all the rest of it, We are more than conquerors. The word means victors. Through him, through Christ who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, that's all, some of that's in reference to the demonic side. None of that is going to separate us from the love of God in Christ. None of that is going to be able to, uh, whether the thing's present or what's to come. You've got to remember something, that God is infinite. He, God is huge. And Christ is the, all of the hell knows who he is. Can I ask you, did you know? Can I ask the Russian listening, do, do you know the living Christ? The Bible teaches that God loves you, that God has come for you, that, that you can turn to the living Christ, that the spirit of the living God can come inside of you through Jesus, that you can be given the gift of indestructible immortality. That's where the new man, the real new race, is coming in Christ and the eternal life that he brings. You can try to um, tap into the dark side's physics and only be destroyed. You can follow the illusions and the deceptions and the propaganda of the dark side. Or you can have the hand of the immortal God in Christ, a Savior that loves you, that you can know, that you can walk with, and whose power is unprecedented, unequaled, and he's going to come for you. And the end of it in Christ, well, we stand and look at God face to face. Listen, do you know the living Savior? Do you know his power? May God's hand be stretched out tonight to destroy everything demonic, satanic, that even tried to interrupt this show, this broadcast, and bring to you right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, deliverance and help and healing. May God destroy anything and everything demonic. Listen, we're going to say goodnight tonight because we're not sure whether we're live right now or not, but we're sure we got the recording up and we'll have it up 
God bless you. Keep us in your prayers. Please do remember Shadow of the Darkness. Remember us in your support. Good night.